New COVID-19 testing in Utah. Why some are calling this a game changer. Three days later, um, it came back positive, which just about floored me. A Davis County woman recovering after testing positive for COVID-19. Her experiences with battling the virus and the recovery process. 100 healthcare professionals from Intermountain Healthcare are headed to New York to help COVID-19 patients. We'll talk about that coming up. And the first major holiday since the pandemic hit the U.S. The unique way local churches are, are worshiping on Easter Sunday. And a cold front marching throughout the state, bringing rain showers, scattered thunderstorms, at least right now. But what will you see for your Easter Sunday? We'll let you know on the forecast. Live from Fox 13 Studios, this is Fox 13 News at 9. First on Fox 13, let's get right to where we stand with COVID-19 in our state. We now have 2,206 cases of coronavirus in Utah. That's up 102 people from Friday. One more person has died from the virus, putting the death toll at 18. Over 42,000 people have been tested in the state of Utah. We're still sitting at about 5% mark for positive tests among Utahns. Meantime, a Salt Lake City laboratory has developed and is now doing COVID-19 antibody testing. Yeah, these blood tests make it so researchers know if someone has been exposed to the virus. Tonight in a Fox 13 exclusive, Sydney Glenn shows us how this will impact Utah's battle against COVID-19. The chief medical officer over at ARUP says they were able to develop this test in just a couple of weeks. He says this is going to give us a much better idea on the spread of COVID-19 here in Utah, even with people who never had any symptoms. I think this is the next step in testing for COVID-19. ARUP Laboratories started COVID-19 antibody testing at the University of Utah and Intermountain Healthcare this week. That will allow us to identify individuals who have developed immunity against infection who potentially could come back to work. ARUP's chief medical officer says this blood test could be a game changer, giving a new look into the rate of infection and helping those on the front lines potentially know their risk. At this point, uh, I think the target is uh, healthcare workers who have been exposed to perhaps the disease to try to identify whether they have been obviously um, become infected with the virus and likely develop immunity. Well, this new test will help us get a much clearer view of the virus. Dr. Ray first says there is still so much we don't know about COVID-19. This is unclear at this moment when, if this virus will come back, and many people believe that it will. And if it does come back, what will that mean? We also don't know is if you are immune to the virus, whether you will remain immune in a year from now and two years from now. Well, this is the next step in COVID-19 testing. It's certainly not the last. Other applications in the near future may also include using this um, antibody test to determine individuals who've had infection and have recovered from the infection can um, donate blood which contain antibodies to help others fight the infection. So the chief medical officer for ARUP says the goal is to have this testing available across the state of Utah in the next couple of weeks and then available nationally soon after that. In downtown Salt Lake City, Sydney Glenn, Fox 13 News, Utah. Utahns are now going into the trenches of the COVID-19 pandemic as healthcare workers get ready to travel to New York where hospitals are overwhelmed. But hope is on the horizon. Fox 13 Spencer Joseph has the story of 100 of Utah's finest healthcare workers who are joining that fight. You know, I would call it kind of the heart of a hero, um, that people are willing to take their expertise and their knowledge and do whatever they can to help. It's an inner calling. I think it's when you go to medical school, when you go to nursing school, you feel this need to go, go where you're needed. Starting next week, two teams of medical professionals with a wide range of backgrounds will work at two hospitals in New York City for two weeks. Intermountain has been tracking the spread across the country. They say New York right now is at its peak, while Utah wouldn't potentially see a huge number of cases until late May or early June. But it's not just a one-sided exchange. Both hospitals in New York have pledged healthcare workers to Utah if we see a similar spike. 
because we anticipate that we as well during the crisis will need caregivers. One of those going to New York. I uh, trained during the AIDS epidemic in Atlanta. Is Dr. Dixie Harris. This is another virus that's very severe. Their whole systems, their whole communities have been hit so far. She volunteered straight away and has been prepping ever since. You know, I'm going to be as vigilant as I possibly can. I mean, I've got my mask. You know, I've got my shoes that can be wiped down. Intermountain also told us this hands-on experience could be vital to treating Utahns. That we learn the most by being there. And then you learn about different ways. Wait, that's a creative way of doing this. And this will be a breath of fresh air for New York hospitals. We're rested, healthy. We've all been screened. They have been working 24-7 for days. So they're tired. Their immune systems are down. So this is a good time for us to go help them. And with all 100 healthcare workers accepting the risk they're taking, they're ready to treat any and all patients that need their help. I just know the team we're bringing, we just feel we need to go help. To me, this is just an incredible, incredible moment. Uh, and it just makes me really, really proud to be a person who works here at Intermountain and, and to be in the profession of caregiving. And Intermountain Healthcare says they'll continue to watch models both in Utah and New York to see when and if those doctors from New York do need to come here. At Intermountain Healthcare, Spencer Joseph, Fox 13 News, Utah. A local company that usually makes boat covers is switching gears to make protective masks and shields. Sugar House Industries made the change when they heard a hospital out east was making the equipment from the same material they use. Within a few days, they had a prototype, and then they began making the mask on their production line. Now they're asking for a little extra help to meet their demand. They're pretty simple products to make, which is great because that's why we can have volunteers who've never done them before come in and within 20 minutes they're making them and, and making a difference. So here's the catch. If you have a sewing machine and you would like to volunteer, you can feel free to contact the company through their phone number or their website. We have that information on our website, fox13now.com. Churches around the world are preparing for a unique Easter Sunday. Fox 13's Katia Collins shows us how local congregations are planning to worship tomorrow. The tulips are still blossoming and people are still out and about. But for a lot of folks, this Easter Sunday won't look the same. This is a different year for us. We've never experienced anything like this. Due to COVID-19, a ban was placed on social gatherings. In return, many churches are going online that as we seek to deliver God's word through this venue, that it will, it will feed your hearts. The difficulty with um, feeling a sense of community is hard. You know, we're trying to navigate it as best as we can with different types of technology. And I think we're, we're bridging the gap, you know, the best we can. Behind the scenes, it's business as usual, without the crowd, but with more prep than ever before. The biggest obstacle. How do we still engage with people um, in all the ways we're currently engaging with them, but in a virtual setting? Whether in person or on your computer, many churches agree that services must go on. That people can still experience some of those same things they experience every Christmas and Easter, um, and perhaps even in a more powerful way just because we're all going through this um, really unique time together. And in some ways, it's, it's a thing that's drawing us together as a whole humanity. You know, this is something we're all experiencing. And as for the future? I think there's new opportunities in this, actually, to connect. Um, text messaging has increased. Um, video counseling and connection through Zoom and FaceTime and Hangout, that's increased. And I think people are trying to um, make sure that a sense of community is maintained even though we're, we're distant from each other geographically. We can't gather together, but, um, but Jesus can meet us where we are. If you would like more information on Easter services throughout the state, we have a link over on fox13now.com. Katia Collins, Fox 13 News, Utah. Taking a turn to weather now, and Breck, usually the night before Easter, everyone would be super concerned about what the weather would be for tomorrow morning, <laughs> but yeah. everyone's clan, plans are just jumbled and not really the same, so I guess I weather's not as big of a deal for those Easter yeah, egg you, hunts. You think about that, like typically, you know, Easter sunrise service up at Snowbird, that's of course canceled. Mm -hmm. Many of us not worried about going to church, but we still want to have that time outdoors, maybe doing an Easter egg hunt or doing a nice jog or a walk. 
Well, we're going to see some changes. We see wet weather right now across northern Utah, cold front moving through where earlier on we had some rain showers, even some hail in portions of northern Utah. I want to share a, a video coming in from actually our very own Spencer Joseph where we had those showers earlier on producing the rain and the hail. And it was quite active weather there throughout the afternoon. Again, this is in Sugar House where storms rolling through isolated thunderstorms. We saw some big changes, at least along the Wasatch Front. Northern Utah still holding on to some showers, though, across portions of northern Utah, even as we move through central Utah at this hour. So changes on the way. We're seeing that change due to that cold front moving throughout the state. Let's take a look at SkyTracker Doppler radar, the position of that front now moving through southwest uh, Utah over towards northeastern Utah. So Grand Junction all the way down through Cedar City where we're seeing some wet weather traveling along I-15, even in the Dixie area. So some wet roads as you make your move up northward, even as far north as Fillmore. Now along the Wasatch Front, we're seeing those scattered showers. A few isolated thunderstorms here and there. Heavier rain as you're looking along I-15 just south of Lehigh, tracking through American Fort. The west side of Salt Lake uh, Valley still holding on to a little bit of rain activity. As you move your way northward, though, not much going on. Still could see some pockets of isolated showers, but things are are improving as we take a look at your hour by hour forecast as temperatures are in the 50s cooling off overnight because of that colder air tracking in we'll find temperatures once we get past midnight down into the 40s and then moving down into the 30s as we wake up on Easter Sunday as we're going to be looking at some sunshine but is there a possibility of seeing any rain for the holiday we'll let you know coming up thanks Brett we'll see you soon also still to come China returning the favor to Utah after our state helped people there stay safe from COVID-19. We'll show you how this all came to be. And celebrating one of America's finest on his 100th birthday, hear from this veteran's secret to a long life. Fox Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, do not move or you will be shot. I don't want to die in here. No one is going to die. You're not going to negotiate see if they surrender first? They haven't made any demands. Ambush. Proceed with caution. Nobody knows we're coming for them. Oh, my God. Hey! On the ground! Green light! Green light! 911, Monday at 7 on Fox 13. This is our home. We've never seen it look quite like this. But there's no mistaking it. And it's our job to protect it because the best people to fight for our communities are those within them. So if you've just bought a Volkswagen or we're thinking of buying sometime soon, we're here to help with the community-driven promise. Tanner Clinic has been providing compassionate health care to our community since 1910. Our 150 providers cover more than 30 specialties, as well as a variety of ancillary services at seven convenient locations across northern Utah. Our goal is to keep your family healthy and happy with comprehensive quality care. As our teams focus on your full body health, you'll find you always have a home at Tanner Clinic. Visit TannerClinic.com to learn more about our diverse services. Together, we must help our community stop the spread of COVID-19, also known as coronavirus. The best way we can do this is to follow social distancing guidelines by staying home whenever possible and staying at least six feet away from other people. We have the power to protect ourselves from contracting COVID-19 by avoiding close contact with others, not touching your face, washing your hands, coughing into your elbow, and disinfecting surfaces. The best movie on TV is FaceTiming my parents. <laughs> Next, new live, Ed Helms. Monday at 10 a.m. on Fox 13. This is Fox 13 News. An Orem man is dead after a crash shut down SR 201 in South Salt Lake today. Utah Highway Patrol troopers say just after noon today, the 25 year old driver of this Ashton Martin was swerving through traffic at over 100 miles per hour when he crashed into the side of a semi. He spun out and crashed into a concrete barrier before hitting another car. The driver was thrown from his vehicle and pronounced dead at the scene. His identity has not been released. 
When the COVID-19 broke out in China, hospitals and churches from Utah sent med medical equipment like face masks to China, and now China is returning the favor. This week, a shipment of much-needed medical material was cleared through customs in Salt Lake City. Kearns representative Eric Hutchins says the shipment is a benefit of Utah building good relationships with cities all around the world. They sent us uh, a really good collection of, uh, of the N95 masks, uh, the ones that you have to have for our first uh, frontline responders, the folks at the hospitals and the emergency room people, stuff like that, ones that are really hard to find. So that was a huge blessing to us to be able to get those in right now. Shipments is addressed to Utah teachers with a message to stay safe. Easter egg hunts in our area are being celebrated a little differently this year due to COVID-19. The city of Tooele usually has a big Easter egg hunt this weekend. Instead, they're scaling the hunt back by giving out wrapped up eggs and chocolate for kids. One couple who has been giving away supplies for the past few weeks is also offering Easter baskets. They're even displaying dinosaur skeletons that usually go up on Halloween to get people into the spirit. Easter is a time of giving and renewal and new hope. So, you know, we're hoping that we can bring some of that to people. He says he's been social distancing, leaving the baskets outside next to the dinosaurs. Everyone having to get creative right now. A Salt Lake City man is also celebrating Easter in a special way this weekend. Take a look. James Hall of Salt Lake City put up 100 flags in his yard to represent different countries. Now he got each flag from his his own travels all around the world, and now he wants to put them up to let the world knows, know that he cares. Many people all over the world are now suffering. And so we were trying to do that is our way of saying we care about our whole world, not just our little corner or our street. James says he was able to put up all the flags in a day, but afterward he was pretty tired. Today, a World War II veteran from Salt Lake City celebrated a major milestone. Earl Jacklin turned 100 years old. His community wanted to throw him a party at their local church, but due to the COVID-19 outbreak, they held a parade instead. We got to ask Earl what his secret to long life was. I keep breathing. <laughs> I don't know. Not a bad answer. Earl says he doesn't mind not having a birthday party this year because he still got to see all of his friends. He says he will have an even bigger party next year to make up for it. So while Earl doesn't know the secret to living a long life, Breck, do you know the secret to maybe having some good weather? Oh, I'm trying to find that secret right now because we're not going to have great weather here Dang. throughout the rest of the weekend as we're bringing that cold front. Of course, we saw it here throughout the afternoon across northern Utah, even in the early evening hours, the showers, some isolated thunderstorms, temperatures beginning to cool off. But leading up to that point, it sure has been nice. So sometimes the secret is it's just a joy when you've got the good weather. Now, as we look from the sunset with the viewer sending in this photo, Karen highlighting, looking across the Tooele Valley, beautiful sunset sunset peering through the storms that rolled through and again we're holding on just to a few showers across portions of northern Utah but the official high today in Salt Lake City well we got up to 66 degrees on average we should be in the low 60s record set back in 1934 80 degrees as we're taking a look your sunrise tomorrow just shy of 7 a.m. now temperatures across the state above normal many spots in the mid to upper 60s we topped off at 71 degrees today in Moab one of the warmer spots across the state St. George at the airport at 69 degrees the official high there. Currently, we're in the 50s still. Temperatures are cooling off just a little bit. It's kind of a slow decline, but overnight we'll get down into the 40s and even 30s across portions of northern Utah. Currently, we're at 49 degrees in price. Still in the 60s in Moab and mid-60s in St. George. Now, winds, well, behind this front, Coming in out of the northwest, some stronger winds, particularly across northern Utah, anywhere between 10 to 20 miles per hour. Some stronger wind gusts right now in Bryce Canyon. But we're still looking at a wind advisory that will be in place overnight, still holding on for Box Elder County, Tooele County as well, where we can still see wind gusts, I don't know, upwards of 40 miles per hour, but 30 to 40, kind of in that range. And that could incorporate areas such as Tooele, even up near Tremont. And so just be mindful of that wind advisory. Looking over towards eastern Utah, freeze watch will be in place 
place. And the focus really is turning towards tomorrow night through Monday morning. Some very cold temperatures from Green River as you make your way over towards Grand Junction. So colder air will funnel in as this cold front moves uh, across the state, bringing the showers. But the cold, cold air lagging behind, that's what will funnel in just in time for Easter Sunday. But let's take a look at these showers and right now having their impact, mainly as we look towards the central southern end of the Wasatch Front over towards Tooele. Can't rule out the possibility you maybe see an isolated shower up until midnight. Then we'll start to see some improvements. But that cold front will have its impact across the state as far as it pertains to seeing colder temperatures tomorrow. Less of a cool down as we look towards southern Southern Utah, northern Utah, though, it'll be significant. We're going to find temperatures anywhere between 15 to 20 degrees colder, but we'll be pushing away the moisture and the clouds improvements expected, except over the mountains. Let's take a look at our computer models as this front continues to move southward overnight. Waking up tomorrow morning, at least earlier on, we can see some showers towards central into eastern Utah. Across northern Utah, it's mainly over the mountains. Now, models indicating there could be a little bit of lake enhancement, which means on the west side of Salt Lake Valley, you might see a snowflake over towards the east benches as well. Not expecting to see any accumulation. Just be aware that that could happen and it will just very be, it will be very brief. Now throughout the day, we'll bring in some sunshine, hang on to clouds across eastern Utah. But as far as the shower threat, there's really not much of a threat across the state as we'll see just clouds here and there. And for northern Utah, some colder temperatures. But the possibility of some showers for northern, central, southwestern Utah will be in effect for right now up until midnight. Then the focus turns towards early morning uh, across eastern Utah. So your Easter forecast then for the Wasatch Front is going to be cool. Starting off at 9 a.m. will be at 40 degrees and not climbing out of the 40s throughout the day. So those plans doing Easter egg hunts, you'll definitely want to do it in the afternoon where there are warmer temperatures, but just know you're going to need a jacket, maybe even a coat though for the kids to wear as we go through the afternoon with partly cloudy skies. Now highs well below normal. Again, we should be about 60 degrees on average. We're in the 40s in Salt Lake City, Ogden as well, 50s across central Utah, upper 60s in St. George, where for the Dixie area, next seven days looks to be nice, warming back up into the 70s next weekend. That's the weekend you're liking with temperatures in the mid 70s. Now from northern Utah, we do have a shower threat Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures though climb slowly. We're back into the mid 60s by Saturday, but for the next couple of days, we're going to keep it cool. Looks good. Thank you, Breck. You're welcome. Still ahead, we're going to show you how COVID-19 may impact the election that Utahns will vote in just in the next few months. There are times when our need to connect really matters. To keep customers and employees in the know. To keep business moving. Comcast Business is prepared for times like these. Powered by the nation's largest gig speed network to help give you the speed, reliability, and security you need. Tools to manage your business from any device, anywhere. And a team of experts here for you 24-7. We've always believed in the power of working together. That's why when every connection counts, you can count on us. As a lazy dog, I'm a flooring expert, which got me the gig as the Carpet One spokes dog. And I need to tell you about the Spillabration event. But I'm new to this, so I got my colleague to help. Don't worry about spills. Save up to 50% on stain-resistant LVT carpet and hardwood during Giant Carpet One Spillabration event. Save today. This spokes dog contract practically fulfills itself. All of your flooring needs in one place at Giant Carpet One Floor and Home. For Hyundai and its dealers, the health and safety of our local communities have always come first. And right now, we're all safer at home. But should you need a vehicle, we have options to shop online, and our participating dealer will deliver it right to you. And to ease the financial strain, you'll make no payments for four months. Together, we can create a safer, better car buying experience. Get 0% APR for up to 84 months on the 2020 Tucson or Elantra and make no payments for four months. Visit HyundaiUSA.com today. Just when you thought you were done painting, you discover paint bleed under your tape. Not with Frog Tape. Frog Tape is the only painter's tape treated with patented paint block technology. Paint block reacts with the water in latex paint to form a micro barrier against paint bleed, giving you the sharpest lines possible. Get professional results with Frog Tape. No messy lines, no paint bleed. For sharp lines, every time, frog it. 
Happy Easter, everybody. Cardinal Timothy Dolan here from St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan. Yeah, St. Patrick's Cathedral might have its doors closed, but we're still celebrating the glory of Easter Sunday morning, and you're sure welcome to join us in prayer. Be with us, please. Easter Sunday Mass, Sunday at 10 a.m. on Fox 13. Don't miss the $100,000 decision. Who is the LEGO Masters champion? LEGO Masters season finale after The Masked Singer, Wednesday on Fox. This is Fox 13 News. The Utah State Legislature will meet in special session next week to take more steps to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. As Fox 13's Ben Winslow explains, voting is expected to be one of the bigger issues ahead of lawmakers. The state is preparing for a primary election at the end of June, but the novel coronavirus has the potential to disrupt it. One thing lawmakers might do, suspend in-person voting or severely restrict it. I think we'll go strictly to mail-in in order to make sure that every, everybody maintains their safety and security. Utah has been a vote-by-mail state for years. In other states, we've seen people risk their health to stand in line to vote, and some are scrambling to get vote-by-mail in place. The good news is we're already in a really good place um, compared to most states. We have a late June primary election um, and we're vote by mail. The president has said he's not a fan of it, but it's worked very well in Utah. You know, he has a bunch of information and concerns, but I think for Utah, what we're doing now is the best for our state. Senator Wayne Harper will run a bill in the special session to move some deadlines surrounding the June primary. We're going to have to go through modify the in-person voting requirements the dates by which the uh, ballots must be mailed in. And then really key is we've got to make sure that the county clerks and all of their election staff has the personal protective equipment in order to go through and be safe as they open up all these ballots. Ballots may have to be quarantined to ensure they're safe to handle. With signature gathering candidates, you know, we're sitting on packets for a day or two before they get processed. Um, ballots may need to, you know, be sat, you know, on a table for, you know, we'll, we'll talk to the experts what are the amount of time really needs to be. The legislative special session will be held next week and it will be largely virtual. Another thing being considered by lawmakers, local health orders and whether they go too far. On the Hill, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah. You're in isolation by yourself, literally. You have no friends, no family there with you visiting. Still ahead, she contracted COVID-19 and survived. Only on Fox 13, her time with the virus while in the hospital and during self-quarantine. A coronavirus outbreak strikes Navajo Nation. I'm John Franke in Salt Lake City. I'll explain why tribal leaders are now under a quarantine.